Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we are going to learn about the skeletal maturity indicators. In our previous videos, we were discussing about various types of occlusal discrepancies, right? Now, when we are on a mission of treating these skeletal or dental malocclusion, knowing the exact age of the patient is really important. So, unless we know the status of growth, both in magnitude and direction, our treatment planning cannot be good enough. Therefore, we have to know the exact age of the patient. And how do we know that? Now, coming on to the anatomy of the hand wrist. Let's have a look at this wrist, okay? So, let us suppose it is in the anatomical position, means the palm is facing the front. So, when the palm is facing the front, the ulna will be on the medial aspect and the radius is on the distal aspect. I'm really sorry about the way I have drawn the bone, but I hope you got the point. Now, as we can see, the hand wrist region, it is made up of four types of bone. We have the distal end of the long bones of the forearm, that is the ulna and the radius. Then we have the carpals here. So, they are eight small irregularly shaped bones, okay? And then we have the metacarpals which are five tiny long bones. Tiny long bone sounds funny, but it is tiny long bone. Then we have the phalanges. So these are also small bones that forms our finger. And each finger has three phalanges, as you can see, except the thumb, which has just two phalanges. Okay, now let us learn a little deep about this. So here we can see the radius and the ulna. These bones were initially used for the purpose of skeletal age determination, but it's rarely used nowadays. So here we have carpals which are 8 in number and can be divided into the proximal row and the... Let me just zoom in. So proximal is like towards you, okay? So the proximal bones are... So these set of bones, they are more towards you, right, compared to these ones. So this is the proximal and these ones are the distal row. Now, in the proximal, we have the scaphoid, then we have the lunate, then pisiform, and then the triquetral, okay? And then in the distal one, we have the trapezium the trapezoid, then we have the captate, and then we have the hamate, okay? And here you can see this little hook, and that is called as the hook of hamate. So these are our carpals, okay? Now, let us move on to the metacarpals. The metacarpals, as we can see here, they are five in number, and they are numbered from one to five, from the thumb, to the little finger so the thumb will be one then this will be two three four and five okay now here you can see a little nodular bone that is the sesamoid bone the sesamoid bone is present in the tendons of the region so it is so it is embedded in the tendons in the region of the thumb so this is the sesamoid okay now let's move on to the phalanges Phalanges, as we can see, except for the thumb, all are made up of three. In thumb, we just have two. So these can be categorized as the proximal, the middle, and the distal phalanges. Okay? Now we have hopefully understood the bones of the hand wrist. Now let us proceed to the various methods. Okay. So the first method is Grolish and Pile method. 